Kurt Cobain was arguably one of the most successful singer-songwriters and artists in rock and roll. Now he didn't get there by accident, so today we're going to go over 10 things we can all learn from Kurt Cobain. So thanks for sticking around. My name is Dan B and I am a huge Nirvana fan. Today we're going to be talking about 10 things we can learn from Kurt Cobain. And if this is something you like, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and leave a like as well. This way you're telling me that you like these kind of videos and you would like to see more. And I'm more than happy to make them. But you don't have to enjoy Nirvana's music to get anything out of this today. Because these 10 things we're going to go over can help you be successful not only in music but in your life as well. So let's check it out. And without any further ado, let's get on with 10 things that we can learn from Kurt Cobain. First up, keep it simple. So if you're at all familiar with Kurt Cobain's music, he kept things very simple for the most part. What Kurt brought to music was a punk rock accessibility. When I first got into playing guitar, the first song I learned was Come As You Are by Nirvana. And this is simply because it was so simple. I wanted to learn guitar. Come As You Are was a great song. Someone had shown me the tab for it and I thought, this looks simple enough, I could figure this out. And within that is the power of keeping things simple. Because Kurt kept his songwriting deceptively simple, it translates universally. So there's a lot of power in keeping things simple, especially if you're a musician and you're trying to communicate with others. The more understandable you make something, the more they can relate to it. Isn't that what you want as a musician and a human being, is them to be able to relate to you? Also, one of the benefits of keeping things simple is it's way easier to master something simple than trying to master something complex. And I think we all want to be masters of our craft, right? Number two, keep a journal. So keeping a journal is really important. You may or may not know that a book was released of Kurt Cobain's journals. And in the journals were many, many things that he wrote. There's things like song lyrics, there's things like poems, and there's his thoughts, there's unsent letters to people, and there's self-reflections. And as you read through this, you start to see the ways that Kurt put things together, which ultimately led to a lot of his success. A journal will help you keep your thoughts organized, It'll improve your writing skills. It'll help you relieve stress. For instance, before doing this video, I jotted down a lot of things I wanted to say, which is kind of journaling. And that helped organize and bring this video to fruition. Keeping a journal will also improve your writing because obviously the more you write, the better you're gonna get. Just like any other skill, that you practice it, you get better. Not to mention, you can journal to relieve stress. I don't know how many times I've written out things just that are bothering me and find a solution through journaling. Or at the very least, I feel like I got something off my chest. Another thing journaling can do is inspire creativity. The more you write, the more you read what you wrote, the more you might get creative. I can't tell you the amount of times I've started writing something, and before I knew it, words were spilling out on the page like I dropped ink on the paper. It's pretty great, and it can be a lot of fun, too. So yeah, I recommend journaling. Number three thing we can learn from Kurt Cobain. Do what you love. Now, Kurt almost always did what he loved without compromise. And the times that he did have to compromise, you could tell the man was not happy. But why is it a good idea to do things that we love? Well, one, we get to learn about things that we want to learn about. And sometimes even things that we didn't know we wanted to learn about. How many times have you been on the internet looking up something that you love and it leads you down a rabbit hole and you learn a ton of things that you would never have known? It's amazing and it can do your mind a lot of good. And let's not forget that doing things that we love can bring not only fulfillment, but happiness. If you love what you're doing, and you can appreciate all the steps that it takes to do it, you're gonna be fulfilled. It's, it's just going to make you happier. And as you get closer to your success in doing the thing that you love, your happiness will increase. And of course, if others see you do this, then you can inspire them as well. And maybe they'll go ahead and do something that makes them happy the things that they love to do. It's a lot like me and when I watch Kurt and some of the other people I've been mentored by doing what they love. It's very inspiring to see. And also if you like being productive, it's gonna help you be way more productive to do something that you love rather than something that you don't really care about. Lesson number four, be artistic. Now Kurt Cobain was an extremely artistic individual. It seemed like everything he did just oozed who he was as well as the message he wanted to get across. And to me, those are perfectly good reasons for anybody to want to be artistic. Art is a form of creative human expression, and it's a way of enriching the human experience. 
Not to mention all the therapeutic attributes it has. Essentially, it's just self-expression. I would suggest trying to be more artistic in every way possible. And art doesn't have to just be a painting or a song. It can be in the way you write. It can be in the way you conduct business. Art is in the way that you do things. It's, it's who you are. And essentially, it comes down to being who you are. But we'll get into more of that soon. Number five, set goals. So Kurt Cobain kind of has this slacker image, an image of someone who rarely did anything and just liked to sit around and kind of throw up songs and have them just barely spill out of him. But that's not the case at all. Kurt was a goal setter. And if you read the journals, you can really see how much he set goals. So why should you set goals? Well, first and foremost, goals give you a direction and a destination to head in. They're gonna make you decide and focus on what you really wanna get, which will of course lead to being more productive. Goals are gonna give you clarity in your decision making, and it offers you control of your future. But who doesn't want that? Having clear goals also provides motivation. It's also gonna give you a sense of purpose and personal satisfaction. So go ahead and try it, set a goal. In fact, leave one goal in the comments below and you know, give yourself a little of that personal accountability. Number six do things with purpose. So everything Kurt Cobain did was with purpose. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it. He's got some far out ideas and some far out lyrics, but really he did that with purpose. And again, I'm going to cite the journals as proof of this. He was very methodical in the list he made, which detailed a lot of the meaning behind what he was doing and why he was doing it. And it's something you should look into if you read his journals. The journals really are a mind-boggling and mind-expanding experience to read through. So what is purpose anyway? Purpose is the reason something exists. It's an intended end, an aim, or a goal. Purpose creates meaning. It offers a sense of direction and helps us guide our path, behavior, and goals when applied to our lives. So having a healthy sense of purpose is going to refocus things that are meaningful to you, as well as help you move ahead and enjoy your life. But why is that important? Well, really for motivation. If you have a purpose in life, it gives you motivation to keep going and helps define those goals that you're working on. In fact, it can help you laser focus those goals and narrow them down to get what you truly are looking to get. Number seven, be yourself. One thing that Kurt always put out there was it's okay to be yourself. Now, obviously there was people Kurt didn't like, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be themselves, though they could probably be better versions of themselves. Now, was Kurt always an honest, open person about who he was? Probably not, but in Kurt's journals, he was constantly trying to find out who that self was. And part of learning about who you are is being critical of yourself. This helps you understand who you are and what you want to be. Think about it this way. You're being judged regardless of what you do. So the more you are yourself, the easier it's going to be to be happy because at least you know that you're living life on your terms and not someone else's. And ultimately, if you can't be yourself, you're just not going to be happy. You're going to constantly want to break out of that prison that you've set for yourself. I'd say it's important to live in alignment with your values. It's good to establish your own identity, which is going to help you build courage and establish boundaries, which will lead you to finding focus and direction. So know who you are, why you are, and in turn, use that to better the world. Number eight, have empathy. So I think Kurt was a person who had a lot of empathy. You could hear this in his song lyrics. Take um, On A Plane, for example. I love myself better than you. That's like, Kurt is such a contradictor in his lyrics. But to me, I love myself better than you. I know it's wrong, but what can I do? He loves himself, but he has empathy for the other person who he loves himself better than. But besides that, Kurt was an empathetic person in other ways, especially when it came to things like human rights. If you read the liner notes of Incesticide, you can see how concerned he was for his fellow human beings. So why is it good that you have empathy? It helps us understand others so we can respond to them appropriately and give them what they need. I would say empathy is a skill and a trait you can acquire because it's definitely something you can work on, as well as some people are just naturally born empathic. But what else can empathy help us with? Well. It can help you bond with somebody. And one of the great things about it is it can help conflict resolution. Because when you put yourself in someone's shoes or you feel their emotions, it becomes so much easier not only to understand where that other person is coming from, but since you understand where they're coming from, you are able to help them in ways that you wouldn't be able to without empathy. And I know it seems elementary, but a lot of people forget to have empathy. And I'm not saying you're one of these people. Most musicians have it in spades. Kurt taught me the importance of empathy. 
it was something I always had within me, but I didn't always appreciate it. So that's one I can thank Kurt for. Number nine, don't let your opinions get in the way of love. Now this is an interesting one. I'm gonna read a small portion of something Kurt wrote in his journals. I've lost my mind many times and my wallet many more. In the simplest terms, don't rape, don't be prejudiced, don't be sexist, love your children, love your neighbor, love yourself. Don't let your opinions obstruct the aforementioned list. What a great message. When you set for yourself a list of morals that you wanna stand by, it's great to top that off with a disclaimer knowing what your faults may be. A lot of times our opinions get in the way of our goals and our true nature. And we forget opinions are not facts. They're simply how we feel in the moment about something. Many of us change our opinions all the time. And that's fine, that's a perfectly normal human thing to do. But if you have a good set of morals in place, you can't let your opinions obstruct those morals. And sure, the more you learn, you might change those morals. Because we all grow as human beings. But in general, it's best to remember that our opinions are not facts. They're simply how we feel about a matter at the time it's presented to us. And last but not least, number 10, have the will to live. Now I'd be remiss to not mention how Kurt Cobain took his own life. And I think that's a really important lesson to learn, especially from this man. Kurt taking his own life made me realize how precious life really is. Today you can see his daughter, full grown, and grew up without a father. You can almost hear the music he would have made and how awesome some of it would have been had he chose to stay here. And regardless of the camp you're in of what happened to Kurt Cobain at the end of his life, I think we can all agree that there's a lesson to be learned there. And that's life is precious. I believe Dave Grohl also said that the thing he learned from Kurt's death was how to live. I think a big mistake Kurt made was setting up all these goals and setting up everything and then achieving them and not having any goals beyond that. We see in his journal that he did have a few but I think things had run away from him so much that he wasn't sure how to set goals anymore. Because he achieved such a huge goal within such a short amount of time, it seems like he wasn't prepared to set the new ones. It also doesn't help that he got into drugs and things of that nature. And I'm not a drugs is bad kind of person, by the way. I think when used as a tool, they can be great, they can be helpful, but when used as a crutch, they can be more painful and maybe not as helpful. But all in all, there's no point to even doing any of this unless you have that will to live. And I know you do. If you didn't have that will to live, you wouldn't be watching this right now. I know it's in you, and I wanna see you succeed. So go out there and live. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something today. If you like this, please give it a like. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give it a dislike. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you thought. And until next time, be sound.